So, before I start, I want everyone to close their eyes for a second. Go back to your childhood. Remember those weekend mornings, your parents or your grandparents are cooking breakfast in the kitchen, and you smell that smell coming from the kitchen, and there's that one distinct smell that's probably coming to your mind right now. Uh, for me, that was awful. You can open your eyes. Um, so, we grew up eating Zopter all the time. Uh, I was always told it's good for you, it's a superfood, and all these health benefits. And most of all, I was told Zopter makes you smarter. Uh, my mom would always have us eat it for exams, worked with varying results, and even though I wanted to believe my mom, uh, I'm a man of science, so I said, let me research this and find out for sure. Before I do that, uh, we'll go through the presenter's sponsors again. I want to clarify that I'm not an expert. I did do some research, uh, but a lot of this, honestly, is just anecdotal stuff I've come across over the years. Um, and I think there's probably as well, there's you know, some academic backing to this as well. I even have a specific disclaimer to my presentation specifically, and that is because there's so you know it's spread throughout the Middle East, throughout the region, people have contradictory opinions, they argue about what's true or what's not and what they think. Uh, it's often no exception. So I want to get that out of the way right now. If you think something different, you heard so-and-so say it's fine. <laughs> Uh, one thing now, again, also, this little housekeeping is on spelling. So, because obviously, Zopter is translated from Arabic, it contains a phoneme that doesn't exist in English, there's wildly different spellings. You can see some of them here. I believe the last one is the most accurate, and that's what I'll be using. Uh, if you think the variance in spelling is kind of crazy, you should give away people pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what led me to this? It's my, it's my brother, not me, so. Thank you. So we grew up in a family that was always focused on food, and food was so important. I think the most important that is not going to come to Arab breakfast. So it's a shared table, you have a lot of little dips, a lot of cheeses, fresh veggies, and the most important is that you gather together as family or friends and you're sharing a meal. At the center of that table for us was always Zaha. Uh, and so I always was eating it. We, we would take Zopter sandwiches for lunch. Um, we would eat it in the morning when I was always off, I was always there. But we never really knew what it was. I just ate it and I asked him, what is Zopter? So it's Zopter. Okay, great. Uh, so I had to go find out for myself. Uh, that just brings us here. We'll do a quick outline so you guys know what to expect. First, we'll just do a little quick background on Zopter. Uh, we'll do Zopter. I'll teach you how to eat Zopter. Uh, we'll talk about the cultural importance of Zopter. Because in order to understand how we get to these conclusions, like, oh, Zopter makes you smarter, you need to peel back the layers of history and society and whatnot. Uh, next is Zopter as medicine, and it's historical uh, background there. And then last but not least is a Zopter science experiment with an unwitting audience. <laughs> and if you have a problem, that's you. <laughs> okay, uh, a little bit of Zopter 101. A quick note on photos, I don't have sources on a lot of that, most of them are taken by my brother on various trips or whatever we've done. He's good at taking photos. I'm, I take photos really quickly, but they're kind of blurry, so I use this photo. <laughs> so a little intro. And so a lot of confusion of why people are always like, oh, well, I don't know what Zopter is, is because it refers to two things. So one, it refers to the plant that's called Zopter, as well as the spice blend. So the spice blend is one of the most traditional and famous spice blends in the world. It's been used for centuries, all the way back to the 12th century, as well as the culinary and medicinal herb. And then, like I alluded to before, it's always been believed to increase your colors. We'll find out later why. Last but not least, I found it interesting because it was used kind of for cleaning, uh, it has antiseptic properties. Remains of Zopter actually found in the bandages in the tomb of Tutankhamun. So it goes back way back. Okay, so we get into the plant. So, like I said, this Zopter is the plant doctor as well as the brand the blend doctor. So there's Zopter, which is a plant, which is sometimes high or wild Zopter. There's also something people call Zopter Achter, which I think usually is associated with oregano. And then there's also Zopter Rumi, which is Roman Zopter, which people associate with time. I might have got those guys. <laughs> the, the important thing is that they all come from the same family. So they're in the United States mint family, which includes mint, oregano, and margarine. So they have a lot of those same flavors, but they really have in common is essential oils, primarily an essential oil called thyme oil, which gives it the flavor. Uh, so it's native to the Middle East, it's a short shrub that grows as a little nice, cute little white flowers, and a very fragrant cotton leaves. So you can almost see the texture of the image. 
So it's simple, right? It's often from plant. Well, no, it's not that simple. So there are 22 different herb species referred to as often region. And again, what's common in them is essential oils. And again, this is kind of telling you why there's so much confusion about what people want to call us out there. Um, and so there's, there are all these different variations, but the part I want to focus on is the last sentence is I can use there anytime. Software is what opens our palates. So you start to kind of get the idea of this central role that's often plays with people. So now we're going to talk, we've established off of the plant, you know what it is. We're going to talk about the blend. And the key to making a software blend is what's known as the big three. Oh, no, not just the three. <laughs> Uh, okay, the big three here. So the, the main ingredient is the top of the plant, it's dried and ground up. Then there's toasted sesame seeds, there's salt at the bottom, which is just a supporting cast, and then the bright red there is sumac. And so you may have had sumac, but also like me, I didn't really know what it was, what it looks like. So that's sumac in the beginning, that's uh, sorry, in the middle. It's a bright red citrus berry, it has very lemony, tangy flavor, uh, and it's essential to be in salt. So it adds a lot of the bright red color, it adds that kind of that punch that it gives it. Uh, it's very important. A lot of kind of knockoffs authors will replace it with citric acid. So that's a big no-no for me. <laughs> the flavor, one or not as complex, and then two, you don't have the same color. So I mean if you often taste like sour patch kids, it's because of citric acid. <laughs> and then just take a second to admire the beauty of this author bed up there on the left. Okay, so now I've kind of set the stage uh, what Zothar is, why it might be more than just a food, and I think you're going to really understand the significance of it after this really nice video. I'm walking in the name of the Lord of Man, it's the name of the Lord of Man, and the Lord of Man, and the Lord of Man, and the Lord of Man. كانت مهنة الأساسية هي بشغل الباطون معلم المرأة فترة الصيف نكون عادة نجيب ساقة من البديل ونبيعه لأنه يكون خفيف الشغل عنا ونحن بفترة خروج متعددة بجنب لبنان بفترة أنا أريد من ضيعة لضيعة من منطقة لمنطقة سعي المراء اللي إحنا تبعنا كلا فبعام الفين أصبحنا منطقة خطة ناس مع معلومة إسرائيل. أروح على النشأة اللي قصة الزعتر، نقطة الزعتر الصيفية البرية. نتعلم أنك عم تصير مركز إسرائيل. وشغل البرية هذا زيادة إنتاج لأنه يكون من البرية. ربنا أعطانا إياه. فإسرائيل بالاحتيال عملنا هذا الإنتاج. فمن هون بلشت الفكرة إنه ليش عم بظلم على الضخص؟ ليش ما جبت الفكرة وبزرعة؟ أمجد الألفين كانت الحياة صعبة كثير بالجنوب. من 48 لسنة الألفين الشعب الجنوبي كان مضطهد. بلشت عمل بالفكرة، عملت على على البلديات. كان يروح بنوع الاستهزاء والإهانة إلى نقطة الزعتر. إنه شو عم تحكي بالزعتر؟ الزعتر بعيد البريد لحاله على الطبيعة. عم يقول ليش الزعتر بالبريد بلاش ما بتطور؟ فضليت فترة طويلة بفتش على البزر بقلبي نكبي. لما شفت المشاكل كتير كلهم عم بقلب على اثنين أو ثلاثة. مثل الولد الصغير ناطر أمه لتجي على البيت لتراضعه. لما شفت البزر تكمل وصار نكبة وصار في عندي هذا الزعتر، هذا الوصف ما بيقدرش يعبر عنه ما فيش كيف تغطي. ما كان نحن بنعرف انه الزعتر بيتزرع هو زعتر بري، انه بيتزرع بمشاكل. بغض النظر عن الخصم الاسرائيلي والحريق، اراد انعرض لهجمه غير منظمه، هجمه البناء، هجمه السفر، هجمه البطون، عم تنكرر. إذا اليوم الدولة ما قامت وحنت ولا نقطة الزعتر، الزعتر خلال بال 2020 ما بيعود في بالدليل شيء، ما عم تحمي على الأرض.
Ele tira só o que está sendo saindo da ordem, né? Então, só o que ele é de mim do capeta. Eu tive a saúde do lado da receita que não está falando de faculdade. Eu tive a saúde que está tendo de gente, eu não sei o que está tendo de leia. Eu tive a saúde da raia. Eu tive a saúde da saúde da saúde da saúde. Eu tive a saúde da saúde. شو نكير المذهب وشو نكير الدين إذا ما عنده يقين بنفسه كبشر وعنده الصبر وعنده الجهاد هو الجهاد مش عامل الضروري فقط الجهاد اللي عم يشتغل وعم يعني كيف يعيش بيقول الرسالة بيقول لنا ممكن فيها كيف أنا ذاك خطيب بسم الله أقعد منها بحبك حبيبك محمد إلى الأبد أحبك بحب أحبك بحبك بأعلى صوت بدون حجر وأنا زدت الدولة والكلمة ما ترددت لش لا لأنت تاني ترددت لمرتي فقط نبتة الزعبة هي طراق التاريخ الدين ابتدانا بنكتة وحدة من حوالي 20 سنة، اليوم عنا فوق المليون مئتين ألف نكتة. بنوصل بنجفف لمدة أسبوع، سافرين كل الشوارع بنحكم الأعشاب من غير زعطة. بندخلوا السماء والملأ. في ناس بندخلوا السنوبر، بنزلوا السنوبر البري، في ناس بندخلوا عدة شغلات مطبوعات. في طرف تاني السنسور. كي تيجي من الشغل اللي بس بيكسر الوضع جاي ملايين غلط بيقول انا عايش على هيك زعطه كل يوم عم بيكتشف شيء جديد منها تحكي معي افهم على البتاع لما عندي بحكيت لك الزعطه حدقت لك الزعطه وقعد معها الزعطه من حركتها بين هواء افهم شو عم تقول لي من معشر الى اسرع 20 سنه معشره ما فيني توقفني ما فيني اعطتني شيء كبير لدرجة لما عشيت على نقطة الزعطة أنا ما كنت بفهم بحياتي شو العشق، كنت بلد حب بس لقيت في فرق بين العشق والمحبة. هذه قصة حياتي مع نقطة الزعطة. Show the process a little bit in the video, but to do a recap, if you want to understand how it goes from plant to spice blend, it starts, it's harvested usually in the summer months, and that's when the flavor is at its peak, the essential oil content is highest. In drier regions like Jordan, it kind of gets picked a little earlier in the spring. After it's harvested and picked, you can grab it, it's left to dry indoors, so it cannot dry under the sun because it damages the flavor, it can burn the leaves, uh, which obviously does not make for a good flavor. Next step is picking, which is very labor intensive. There are some tools used, but still a lot of it is just kind of picked by hand. Next is sifting, a series of sifting to kind of get all the impurities out until you're left with nothing but the pure zoppa leaves that you want. And last but not least, the zoppa leaves the ground and mix with the other ingredients. And if you want to make it yourself, you can. You start with leaves and then just follow those steps. Um, and then, of course, like anything else, in the Middle East, there's a lot of regional variations, different uh, recipes, different ingredients that come to play. Um, and a lot of this is because there's always kind of closely guarded secrets. It's sourced to the product from people from household to household. They're very uh, Palestinian, Jordanian blends tend to be quite similar, a little bit focused more on the software. So what changes quite often is not necessarily the ingredients, but rather the ratio of ingredients. So how much sumac they put. For example, in Lebanon, they might increase the amount of sumac. I have an image here and I've seen on a couple food blog that says Lebanon, they add orange zest to it. I've never seen this in real life, but I don't think anyone's surprised about Lebanon zesting things up. <laughs> 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 uh, and so next we'll go to kind of what I call like the Zotler adjacent 
uh, category. And so there's something called Zatar Halali, which is, of course, in the Halal in the city of Aleppo. Uh, and this is very similar, so it has the same amount of Zatar core or starter pack, if you will. And then it's added to crushed spices, roasted nuts, and it tastes very good, it's delicious, but it's used different ways than Zatar itself. The next one, of course, is Egyptian Dukkha, uh, which is named in the words like, kind of pound because it's made usually in a I always mix up these words, mortar and pestle. Uh, and so there's also, you know, sometimes the chickpeas in there, different spices mixed in. You know, Egypt always got to be a little bit different. <laughs> Next, very exciting part, uh, and my favorite part, is how to eat zothar. So I would say that zothar is amazing, it tastes delicious, it improves everything. But if you're going to eat it, there's one thing that must be there, and that is olive oil. So zothar and olive oil are destined to be together, need to be together, cannot be apart. If you're eating zothar, do not eat it up olive oil, please. To further illustrate my point, I have a piece of iconic music from time past that I want to share with you so that you really get why zothar and olive oil need to be together. <laughs>
And the next, with all the oil again, somebody, I guess along the way, figured out, hey, why not fix them? You know, I don't want to dip and dunk, I want to just get it over with. They made it into a paste, and then they spread it on top of a flatbread. And this is called a manusha, which comes from the area where to carve or to sculpt, because when you're stretching out the bread, you make these little pockets of flavor, uh, and you can fill it with ingredients like salt. I do want to take a moment, uh, if you take only one thing from this presentation, is that this is a manusha, and it's not a zalter pizza. <laughs> Uh, this is another version of the menusha. A lot of people do it a very thin, put on the sides, they roll it up, wrap it up. Uh, both are delicious, both are amazing. If you want to get into which one is better, that's for another presentation. Okay. So, for the longest time, and my young child, the only ways I ever saw software eaten were the ways you just saw. But I think with the rise of food media, and people become generally more curious or internationally traveled, People start to use Zotter in really creative ways. You see a lot of chefs using it popping up on a lot of menus. So you start to see things like Zotter popcorn, Zotter french fries, Zotter on eggs, and everybody Zotter made its way to an avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> even people are using even Zotter cocktails like at the Green Zone, which is amazing. Uh, but the flip side of that is as this stuff starts getting trendy and popular, is it loses some of its identity. And so this leads us to kind of some of these big topics of food appropriation, erasure, and honoring kind of the origins of where these plants are indigenous to, where they're grown, and how they should be preserved, how they should be shared, and that the ingredients and the way they're prepared matter. And to further illustrate that, I have one more video <laughs> uh, to show you. Uh, because once the office started getting popular, obviously a lot of big companies tried to take advantage of its popularity. But what they did did not do Zoffler justice. I don't think it should be allowed to be called Zoffler, but we will talk about that later. Enjoy. Uh, you know, the desert and uh, the Zach and the Bach, they are doing. Which is a little bit more of a serious song, but then we'll go back to having fun at the end. 
So we talked a little bit about health life, but we saw in the video of the public passage. So this was an economic initiative by the UN after a series of wars in Lebanon to try to help the economy. Uh, they found that Zahra and Sumac were both very viable crops. Obviously, the climate's perfect for it because it's always grown there. Um, and the part I'm going to hang on to here is, and Zahra is resilient. Um, and I think that's important to remember because I think it represents the people who grew up in those lands. Uh, we're going to quote here from Abu Hassan again. So he was able to kind of harness the power and potential of Zahra that was always grown in the wild kind of bring it in, and now he's able, instead of just harvesting once a year, he can harvest four or five crops a year, uh, producing Zafra in a more kind of sustainable, scalable way, which is good because more Zafra for more people. And then now he's showing kind of the opportunity to give him and his family. He gets to go to Italy, Jordan, even Libya to talk about Zafra, uh, which is really amazing. For me, I just get to come here to DC. <laughs> Uh, this is a quote from a writer and filmmaker. I'll let you read it for a second. And the part I want to focus on is it's a blend made by mixing the salt dough with necessity. Even as the dip with olive oil is often ubiquitous, staple on breakfast table in Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, and Palestine. We have nothing to eat but our salt and olive oil is an expression meaning we have only our staples. So these are very humble foods. It's olive oil, it's with herbs, sesame, sumac, but it's important because it's at the center of the table, a family gathering, and most importantly, because those herbs grow from the ground. And the next, <clears throat> even though Zafra is extremely popular and important in the region, it has always said to be powerfully associated with Palestine. Many people say that the most savory Zafra in the world grows wild in the mountains of Tunisia and Palestine. And we have a quote here, uh, again, to eat it, Zafra, all the way with spice mix. It's to partake of our land. And it's no coincidence that olive oil comes from olives and the olive trees that are so symbolic in Palestine. Those two things go hand in hand. And so, again, this is kind of further emphasizing the point is the famous Edward Said. Um, this is a meal that's eaten everywhere, but when he's having it as Palestinian, he starts to see this is a sign of a Palestinian home that has out there. So, for Palestinians, it takes on an additional layer of meaning because of this connection to the land that's been settled for so many years. And of course, like anything else, Zafra became the target of some campaigns, uh, much like the olive trees were planning the campaigns to knock down olive trees and kind of erase the history and replace it um, with a new history. So Zafra became targeted by being placed on the protected plant list. Allegedly, it's because it was an endangered plant, but I think anyone who knows knows that it's targeted for a different reason. Uh, it was illegal to pick wild zafar, and it was illegal to be confiscated at checkpoints. And I think it was just another example of this loss of agency for Palestinians to even pick the wild herb that had been growing on their soil for centuries. And this is a quote along the same topic, uh, and for that side, so it also relates to the tradition of going out into nature and of the harvest. That part cannot be underplayed. So going out into the land, grabbing wild harvest, this commercialization process that was related to the legislation, this connection between man and his land is broken. So it's impossible to understand the man and justice without the cultural context, meaning the significance of software and harvesting it had in Palestinian culture and shaping Palestinian identity. This is a photo we took when we were in Jerusalem in 2018, so loosely translated. Uh, Jerusalem is ours, rallying the Afro. The land is for us, Jerusalem is for us, and God with his might power is with us. We are staying in whatever is left from the olives in itself. And so this shows just how powerful those two things are, that they've been in the land forever. We're not leaving as long as they're still here, and they'll be here forever. Um, and it continues to take on even more kind of iconic status, carrying a lot of poetry, uh, literature, and of course in songs. This album is from the famous poet Mahmoud Darwish, with the composer Mustafa Khalif. The album is amazing, the entire album is great. This song, uh, Hands of Time and Stone, I think is really beautiful. It's on, again, how important this author is, and you know, you're getting your hands in it. And I'll just read the quote real quick for the lyrics. Uh, to those hands of Zafra and dark and stone, a voice, a voice is cried to Ahmed, forgotten and alone. The passing clouds have left me homeless and unknown, and only mountains dare to hide me in a barren home. 
So as you have started to gather just how important software is, you can understand that it's always played a large role in people's lives in the region. And generally, when that's the case, it's because it was used for many years, not just as food, but also as medicine. And so a lot of it started, so Zaka's oldest recorded name is the biblical name Hyssop. And so there's many references to using Hyssop for different cleaning rituals, for treating different things. And I think from that, it started to evolve to people using it in different cases. So we see throughout history, there was a few different people. First, the philosopher of Hindi. He used it in medicine to treat a bacterial infection called St. Anthony's Fire. Sounds very painful. Um, then, of course, the physician Al Razi thought about it as an appetite enhancer, stomach purifier, and treatment for flatulence, which is different than the video showed. I don't know, we'll look into that later. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the famous uh, Maimonides, he said to have prescribed it to his patients to treat a, a variety of ailments. And a lot of people think he even really started pushing forward this idea that Zafa has all these different health benefits and can be used to kind of just in all sorts of uh, different instances. And it seemed like he was on to something. Because later studies looked at the essential oils in Zafa, the benefits that they have, and these essential oils are high in antioxidants that can protect cells. The sumac and sesame seeds also have extremely high amount of vitamins and other benefits. I remember someone also told me that the sesame seeds like a base of dilate, dead later, which can bring more blood into the brain, which will be helpful later. Uh, the Zothar also anti-microbial activity again, so a lot of cleaning against salmonella and the long word, which if you've heard of a staph infection, that's what that is. Okay. So these are just a few <laughs> of the cure-alls I've heard or come across that Zothar can be used for. There's many more. Uh, Prevents digestive and allergic reactions to bread. So if you are gluten intolerant, allergic, or sensitive, I think the problem is not the bread, you just have not been putting enough software on it. <laughs> uh, stomach problems, whooping cough, sore throat, colds, flus, fevers, coughs and bronchitis, menstrual cramps, internal parasites, indigestion, tooth pain, and depression. And so I think the question is, what can software do? <laughs> And you can sing it along to the Pepto theme if you know it. <laughs> I, of course, none, none of these things are but I know my illustration. Just want to get that out there. <laughs> so, now to the question everyone, I'm sure, has been sitting on the edge of their seat waiting to find out uh, Does author really make you smart? Yeah. <laughs> so, this is like one of the largest spice shops in Jordan. Uh, Jordan alone, which is the largest exporter of author in the world. We sell five tons of Zotter a month. It's much of part of who we are. All our mothers, like mine, used to make us eat Zotter sandwiches before exams because everyone believes Zotter makes you smarter. Now, what's interesting, I believe it, I found some stories that said this originated during the Lebanese Civil War when food was low and mothers encouraged their kids to eat Zotter, which they had plenty of, saying it would make them smarter, and I guess it spread from there. So, there is a little bit of science, though. So, one of the active phenols uh, in Zotter is called carbacol. And there's this study here from the medical journal called Molecules. Uh, and it found that it's a brain active molecule, basically, with a lot of these fancy words, can determine feelings of well being and could possibly have positive reinforcer effects. There's another journal, uh, British Journal of Nutrition, which also did a study with oregano, which of course is in the same family as Zotter, is brain active. And it has moderate triple reuptake inhibitor activity. And if you don't know what that means, you probably need to eat more salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's in this positive behavioral effects in MMO. So they postulate that such an extract may be effective in enhancing mental well being of humans. And what most of these studies have in common, as most studies do, they all have the same conclusion further research is needed. And that's why I'm here today. <laughs> so, just a quick recap of those studies that I know is a lot of. Big words and confusing. So, zonal plants have high essential oil content, especially thymol, and then there's phenol called carbacrol. So, the studies followed carbacrol given to mice for seven days and found that it significantly increased their dopamine and serotonin levels. And so, it has been a while since science crossed a lot of people. So, just a reminder dopamine has a cute brain reward system, and serotonin is important to learning and mood. So, very important stuff. And so, now is the interactive part of the presentation, and this is where we're going to test. Uh, the question. And so we're going to pass around 
little samples is offered for you. I made them this morning, so. Uh, I was in the bread and the yolks of gluten or sesame allergy, so please don't eat it. <laughs> So as they uh, pass those out, I'm just going to go through the experimental design real quick. <laughs> very, very advanced. Uh, my hypothesis is if you eat software, then you will be smart, or more smart. Independent of the way to of course, is your software consumption, which will... Please do not eat it yet, we'll mess up the experiment. Wait a second, it's not going to happen. Uh, and if you're fasting, I'm sorry, I know it's close, um, but you can just pretend to take it and see the placebo if it works. <laughs> and then the last thing is, of course, the dependent variable is intelligence. And I'm going to wait until everyone has it to start the experiment. Q and A. Two questions. Yeah. What did I 
you happen to know where the DMV we can buy socks on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not supposed to disclose that. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I don't know, something like this starts to me. <laughs> If you'd like to try more of those, you can come to our bakery, or you can find them in the local foods. basis within the DMV and there's chapters across the world. In the U.S. we have chapters in L.A., in New York, in Boston, um, and in Canada we have Toronto, Ottawa. So check us out here. You can scan this QR code. You can find all of our social media in one place. Um, and today's presentations will also be uploaded onto our blog eventually. And you can reach out to the presenter directly after this. So we can feel free to ask them any questions. And yeah, if there's a question for us. We'll take it. We do. We have chapters in Morocco, the UAE, Egypt, Lebanon, Kuwait, Saudi. Thank you for helping me. Tunisia. Yeah, we have chapters across the Arab world. We have chapters in Europe, in France, in Germany, um, London. So we really are global. And we have a chapter in Mexico. Um, so we are trying to spread our our our. Uh, our seed, not our water seed, but um, <laughs> yeah, and you can start a chapter in any city as well. We help you through the process, and again, it's a really community driven process. So, thank you everyone for your time today. We're really grateful again to Chris and the Kennedy Center. Thank you to our hosts for helping us with all the technology. Um, and we hope you guys are excited for our star break. I'll give it to Chris to break us. Thank you, Anthony, and I'm going to thank you for the team. This is the first half of our show. Um, it is now a thought time. We have some.